We've also <laughs> engineered some all new functionality with the engineering analysis module. Now, the engineering analysis module has taken a lot of functions from an existing Keras application called Beams, which stood for the Bathymetry Engineering and Management System. Beams is a GIS based application that was built to satisfy requirements for ports, waterways and related market sectors. The application had 10 years of development in conjunction with users such as the Port of Hamburg, Port of Montreal, Ports of Metro Vancouver and the Army Corps of Engineers in the USA. A lot of the functionality has now been migrated to Bathy Database as a module for either Base Editor or Base Manager to create an, create an even more robust solution for our users. So included with the Engineering Analysis module is the Keras Reference Model Editor or RME. This allows ports and waterways users to create, build and maintain theoretical models of their channel or waterway. Now another really good feature is that the Reference Model Editor also has support for Land XML, which is a common exchange format for CAD applications. So this means that models that have been created in any other software and saved as a Land XML file are able to be imported into Bathy Database through RME. Which is really going to be useful for a lot of our clients out there. Now the most important thing that I think this brings to the table is volumes. Now we can computate volumes within Bathy Database. So a number of different methods for creating volumes are available depending on the user's requirement. First we have the rectangle volumes to provide a simple quick calculation. For a more robust calculation the hyperbolic method can be used. This creates a smoother surface for computations by using the center of each grid cell to construct a series of prisms. The triangle method can compute volumes from the tin layer, meaning that the true position of the source depth can be used. Comparative volumes allow the users to compute the volumes between two tins, which could be used to determine the volume difference between a pre post thread survey or to possibly look at sedimentation within an area. Now all of these volumes can be computed between the bathymetry data and a reference model or the bathymetry data and an infinite horizontal plane for a more simple calculation. The results are stored as an XML file and can be exported to a text file or turned into a publication using the new publication tool in Bathy Database. Conformance analysis allows us to display the bathymetry information relative to the reference model. It allows for a simple and quick visualization that can be easily customized. So in the example here, areas shown in red are danger areas where the bathymetry no longer conforms with the reference model, i.e. shoal areas. Yellow represents cautionary areas where the bathymetry is less than a meter below the reference model and green represents safe areas where the bathymetry is over a meter deeper than the model. Now these are just the default parameters but they can be easily changed to suit a user's specific requirements or you can change the units to feet for you guys in the US. So we have a comprehensive set of tools for shoal management. Users can automatically detect shoaling features within a channel or waterway and group them according to the depth or proximity in both a long track and a cross track. The shoals can then be stored in a reference and a database and have their status configured between active and canceled. The publication function allows the user to easily generate a notice to mariners advising them of the shoal. So Dan, since I gave the last demo, do you mind giving the engineering analysis module demo? Alright, so in my file, I'm a, uh, I'm a little bit more northeast than what Josh is, so I'm just up in the Channel of Quebec, which is a very uh, nice part of the world that I was lucky enough to be in, uh, in Easter this year when I was at Caris HQ. So you can see that the data layers that I have open is I've got an ENC as my background. I've got a shoal survey. I've got my shoal survey post dredge. And I've got my reference model as well. So you can see my reference model is divided up into a number of features. So I've got some alignments. I've got points that are the basic building block of my model. I've got a number of surfaces which represent my, uh, the theoretical model of my waterway. And then I've got some other data like some profile lines and some stations. So if we go and have a look at this, if I select one of my surfaces and have a look in the selection window here, you can see I've got the name for the surface, so surface 1. As I go through here, I've got my overdredge allowance, so my allowance below the surface. And I've got my maintained depth of 12 meters. So as we keep moving up, you can see I've got some changes along the channel on my stations. So I've got another surface here, I've got surface 2. 
as we get up, I've got another surface here at the widening around the bend and another surface at the top which looks like the uh, entrance to the channel. Now the first thing that I'm going to show you guys today is that you can look at all of this in 3D which is quite a handy feature. So if I open up the 3D viewer, I'm going to turn on my shell survey and I'm going to zoom into that. So here I've got my shell survey and what I want to do is I want to visually compare this with my reference model. So if I turn on my reference model, I'll turn on my surfaces and I'll just turn on a few other layers. So I'll turn on uh, profiles and stations. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my surfaces slightly transparent. So I'll give that a value of 25% transparency. And now you can see that I can view the bathymetry underneath the surface. And what this allows me to do is to easy, easily visualize areas where the bathymetry no longer conforms and I've got shoals. So you can see I've got one down here. Now this is the same 3D engine that we use in HIPS. So I can uh, basically fly down my channel here. can uh, record this as a fly through or uh, provide it to people to look at in Karis Easy View. And you can see as I get to the top here, I've got some more shoaling features. So you can see the sand waves that I've got on the left here. And also, if I want to be able to visualize this more clearly, I can use the vertical exaggeration to be able to really make my uh, shell features stand out above my reference model. All right, so being that Josh is so excited about volumes, that's the first <laughs> feature that I'm going to demo. So if I highlight my depth layer, you'll see I've got a couple of buttons up here. So I've got one for compute hyperbolic volumes and another for compute rectangular volumes. So what I'm going to do is go tools, volumes, hyperbolic. And just to show that, this section here is pretty much the engineering analysis module. So I've also got, this is uh, the reference model editor. So that's what will open Karis RME in a separate application window. So going back to our hyperbolic volumes, you can see I've got the, my different surfaces for my reference model here. So I'm going to select surface one because the bathymetry doesn't, uh, doesn't have any coverage over any of the other surfaces. Or alternatively, I've got the infinite horizontal plane here. So we'll leave it at reference model surfaces. And we've got a number of algorithms for calculating our overdredge allowance. And I'm going to use wide bottom, which essentially calculates the entire volume of bathymetry between the uh, overdredge allowance and the reference model in the calculation. So I'm going to pick an area to save that and you can see that just to save a bit of time because we are uh, getting close to that hour mark, I've already created the uh, hyperbolic and the rectangular volumes. So I'm just going to cancel out of that and I'm going to open the volume results. So if I open results, I'm going to open the hyperbolic results. And you can see here, that's the calculation that I've made. So you can see my, uh, see my reference template. You can see the overdredge algorithm that I've selected. You can see minimum and maximum values, an area to dredge, a volume to dredge, an overdredge volume, and a combined volume. Now, this can be exported to a text file here. Or alternatively, I can create a publication using the new publication. So I'm going to load up just a default volume publication that we've got. I'm going to select, this time we'll have a look at the rectangular volumes and we'll create a publication out of that and we're going to go preview. So here you can see just a basic little publication that we can print out or save as a PDF. And here we've got our surface. So here you can see we have surface 4 selected but there's no data for it because uh, there was no bathymetry overlapping that surface. And you can see that the rectangular results have given us slightly, slightly larger answers than what the, uh, what the hyperbolic volumes did. Now this publication can be customized to meet your uh, own specific requirements, have your own logos in there. So the next thing I'm going to show you is tin volumes. So if I right click on shell survey and I'm going to create a tin similar to what Josh was doing before. And just to highlight that I'll turn off my other layers. So you can see there that I've created a tin from my grid. Now, when I highlight the tin layer, you'll see that a button comes up here for compute triangular volumes. So I'm going to click that. And once again, the same GUI as before. So I'm just going to have surface one. I'll leave wide bottom as my overdredge allowance. And I'm going to say volume results tin. So when I run that, I'm going to guess about five seconds. 
and you can see that was a very quick method of computing volumes and it's given me very comparable, result, very comparable results to what my hyperbolic method was. Well, that only took three seconds, certainly very fast. All right, now the next thing that I'm going to show you is the new profile tool, which is really, really quite good. So I'll turn my depth layers back on and I'm going to go tools, profile by digitizing. Now this brings up the profile dialog and in this I've got all of the available height sources that I've currently got open in BDB. So I'm going to turn on my reference model and leave that with a color of black and I'm going to turn on the depth layer of my shoal survey. I'm going to give that a color of red. So you can see here that I can give a title to my, to my graph or to my profile. I can give a label for the vertical axis and we've also got the ability to change the st sample step size. So I'm just going to leave those values there for now. I'm going to click OK and you can see that the profile window is now displayed and my cursor has changed to a little digitizing cursor. So I can just click along and as I digitize my profile, my display is dynamically updating in the profile window. I can hit backspace to remove points and add more and that display will keep updating. So I'm going to end that line and what that does is that saves that profile line in my newly created profile layer. So the other way that I can create a profile is I'm going to go, I'm going to select one of the profile lines out of my reference model. So I'm going to select this profile line and I'm going to go tools, profile, super selection. So it brings up the same GUI. So once again, I'll turn on my reference model and my shell survey depth layer is red and I'm going to turn on my shell survey post dredge layer this time as well as blue. This time, I'm going to give it a title of survey comparison. And we'll just leave those values for now and we'll hit OK. So you can see this time, just to expand it out, I'll bring the window out. It's given me the profile for that selected line. So you can see my reference model here in, in black. You can see my shoal survey in red and my post dredge survey in blue showing that the shoal has been removed. Now, any given time, you can right-click on this window and access the profile settings. So, for example, if I wanted to smooth that graph out, I can give it a sample step of 5 metres. And for my smoothing option here, I can either take the average value in that 5 metre sample step, the shoalless value, or we can dis display a high-low line. So, being that we're looking at a shoal here, I'm going to leave the shoalless value. I'm going to hit Apply. So, you can see that that's now updated my graph. I can also export this to an ASCII or an image for use in other publications. So I'm going to dock that window back down here. And another handy feature is that once you've created these profiles, you can actually select the profiles on the profile layer and it will show the profile for that, digit, for that line in the window. So the next thing that I'm going to show is the conformance analysis. So I'm going to go Tools. I'm going to highlight the depth layer. I'm going to go Tools, Conformance, Analyze Conformance. So this brings up my color range file. So you can choose to edit this if you'd like to change it around, but we'll just leave it as default and I'm going to hit OK. Now my guess is five seconds for this. Four seconds. Ooh. Boom. Now what this has done is it's created a new Caesar file and it's given it a color range file showing the difference between my shoal survey and my reference model. So once again, just highlighting the areas in green are safe areas where the bathymetry is over a meter deeper than the model. Yellow is the cautionary areas where we've got less than a meter of clearance. And as we go up here, we've got areas in red as our danger areas where we've got shoals. Now, another handy feature with this is being a Caesar file, you can export it to a TIFF image, which I've already done. So I'm going to open up that TIFF image. And we can actually create a really good 3D view out of this. So I'm going to turn on my 3D viewer. I'll turn on my depth layer. And I'm going to drape an image over that. So if I drape my conformance view image over it, You can see now we've got our conformance view draped over our bathymetry. We can give that a bit of exaggeration. And once again, we can create a fly-through of our channel showing the safe areas and showing the cautionary areas and showing where we've got shoals. 
So we're running out of time here, but the last feature that I'm going to demonstrate for you, let me just get rid of a couple of these layers, is the shell detection. So once again, I highlight the depth layer of my shell survey, and I'm going to go tools, shells, detect shells. So here I can select my reference model, and here I can uh, group my shells. So the group areas is the horizontal proximity of the shells. The uh, split boxes at each 0.2 meters, that divides my shells into 0.2 meter depths. Now once again, to sound like a cooking show, here's one I prepared earlier just to save some time. So if I open up my detected shoals, this is the result. So it creates shell boxes around my shoals and it also creates some contours for them. So if I highlight these shell boxes and have a look at the attributes, you can see that I've got the minimum depth in my shell box, whether the shoal has been registered in a database and the status of the shoal. So as I look at these three boxes here, this one is at 12.1 metres, we've got this shoal at 11.9 and that one at 12.3. So that's showing the 0.2 metre intervals that the shoals were created at. So if we go back to this shoal down the bottom here, so I could highlight this shoal and I could go tools, shoals, I could register that in a database, and um, that's just a Microsoft Access database, so once I've got that going, I can uh, import, import from that database, or I can change the status of the shoal to cancel in the database, because as we, uh, as we saw before in the profile, that shoal has been cleared. Now, should that shoal be existing and we need to inform mariners, I've got the option, so if we zoom in, I get this, how I get this in the display, I can go new publication again, this time I'm going to use my default shell publication and all of the available information is there in the window and I'm going to go preview and there you can see our shell publication. So in our shell publication we have the position of the shell, the coordinates, we have the depth of the shell, we have the maintained depth of the channel, length and width and our clearances for the channel. Now once again this can be customised so that you can have your own, uh, own information here and your own, uh, own logos. And look, that's pretty much uh, brought me to the end of the engineering analysis demo.